Hello everyone, General Aviation Guru here again today. This is going to be your video today, the pre-flight inspection of November 84004 uniform Cessna 172F model 1965. First thing we do is we see we're a little bit farther away from the airplane, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the general condition. Is it leaning any which way? Is it, are the tires deflated or something wrong with it? The landing gear look messed up? That's the first thing. Our second thing is to go ahead and proceed into the cockpit. And as we walk up, we're still looking at our airplane, seeing how it looks. We walk in, and the first thing I'm going to check is to make sure that we're legal. So we have our documents, our airworthiness, and our registration, which we're in the pouch right here, and as well as our information as far as weight and balance and the POH, which are in this little sack here. I've already checked that, and we're good to go. We got a fuel top off, which is another thing that I'll check. The next thing is to prepare the airplane for the pre flight inspection. So I got to roll our seat back here, our wonderful 1965 seat, and we're going to go master switch on. Check the operation of the rotating beacon, roll down the flaps, turn the beacon off. Get our master switch off, we check that the fuel gauges and the, and the uh, turn coordinator sped up. That's alright. So we're going to start our pre-flight inspection right here. Uh, again, we're aluminum airplane, 1965 old school, so we're going to check to make sure that we have no ribbons popping and that the, uh, it sounds good when we hit it. And we're just going to give, give a general inspection of how the airplane looks. We have antennas here, the LT antenna. We'll knock the spider off the airplane. Yeah. And uh, we'll just continue checking, of course, our wonderful uh, blue and gold numbers here. Um, our fairing right here. We're checking the leading edge of our horizontal stabilizer for any cracks or imperfections. And as far as our rivets, again, everything riveted to the airplane is very important. Bearings are too, but anything that's riveted to the airplane is obviously load bearing, and we want to give extreme importance to that. As we look down, we're just checking for any further imperfections. If we come around in the uh, in the elevator, all system 172 is there's a counterweight right here, and you want to check to make sure that, that that is there and secure. As we move the elevator this way, the yokes will come back. As we move it this way, the yoke should go forward. This is your flight control for your pitch, your elevators here. We're going to check our connection here, our connection here. Okay, we're going to check inside of the horizontal stabilizer through this little peak hole here. Um, we do see a slight bit of corrosion, but again, that's an annual type thing. Uh, nothing that would prevent us from actually flying. As far as looking down here, we check the same connections below here and check that there's no fraying or anything like that on the rudder control cable. As we come, we're going to check that our tail tied down to secure the airplane that was just flown. So it's at the FBO Hill aircraft, and it's obviously not tied down. Our rudder, we're going to grab it from the lowest, thickest point because you don't want to bend this. That can cause huge changes in your, in your, um, in your yaw stability. But what you want to do is you want to grab it from the bottom and just look inside and make sure that you have no play, that, not much play in the cable to make sure that everything is secure. You're going to check that this hasn't been messed up because this is your rudder trim tab. It's not adjustable like in a Piper. It's fixed and you want to make sure that it's in good condition. You're going to come uh, on the same side still and check your connections. Connection here, connection here and also connection down here. Check to make sure that's secure and there's no rust raining off from it or something. We're going to check the security of our VO, VOR1 antenna, which is right here, okay? The rotating beacon and the aft uh, position light. We're going to come up here, same thing with the bolts here. We're going to check sure that that's oiled. Connection here, connection here, and counterweight. We're going to check it for smooth and we're checking uh, for smoothness and checking in the inside of the aircraft. Below, uh, on this side, which is unique, you'll see the uh, control arm for the trim tab. We're going to check the security there and make sure that it is cotter pin and safety wire. Um, we're going to come below here, check that our access panel is good. Again, our tail tie out again, and our rudder uh, control cable is secure. And again, checking inside this uh, starboard uh, horizontal stabilizer for any anything nasty or any birdsness or anything like that that might have decided to crawl inside our wonderful airplane. As we come on this side, very important, again, take a general picture. We're going to look at the fairing here, or and uh, the uh, leading edge here, making sure that we see no imperfections, and our, again, our fairing here, our access panel for the annual, and a fairing right here, making sure everything is in good condition. We're going to check the security of this, okay, make sure that everything is in normal we're going to give the tail a little push, again to check for security, and give the nose shirt a little play to make sure that the airplane responds as it should. 
as we come here, we're checking rivets. We're checking rivets. Again, no pop rivets allowed. Anything riveted to the airplane is necessary for flight. Okay? Quick fact. Anything that you, as you notice here, there's this line of rivets. Everything behind this is, is referred to as the empennage. Everything in front of this line of rivets on the Cessna 172 is the fuselage. So that's just one quick fact uh, from General Aviation Bureau today. Anyway, moving on. Again, we're checking rivets. We come up here to our flaps, so we're going to check it aft. This airplane is very dirty because it hasn't been cleaned in a week. We have had a lot of rain here in Georgia recently, so I'm pretty sure it's dirty. Well, it is dirty. I'm touching it. But uh, as we here, as we uh, grab here, we're going to check for security. We're going to check for a little bit of play in the flaps. The flaps should have play, but not too much play, and they should stay in their same 40 degree of flap position as they are right now. We're checking our access panels. We're checking that there's uh, no imperfections up in here. We're checking security with this bolt right here, here. As we come here, again, access panels and checking the play one more time. As we move down, this would increase lift on this wing, causing a left turn. So we want to make sure that the yield went to the left as it did. This would decrease lift and cause a right turn. Right turn indicated on the yoke. We come below here. Uh, on your 172, you will always notice four bolts and four screws. In the hinge, it should also be cotter pin. You move down. Four bolts, four screws. Here is your push rod that controls it. Make sure that's secure. Four bolts, four screws, and cotter pin. Here is your counterweight that protects against aerodynamic flutter. Very important, make sure that's secure. Four bolts, four screws, and cotter pin. Here's your wing tip. Again, this is not necessary for flight because it's screwed to the airplane. However, we still want to make sure it's secure. We have our nav light here. Make sure it's secure and that the bulb isn't cracked or anything like that. And make sure the screw isn't loose. I've had that problem on this airplane before. Uh, we're going to make sure that these are in place so that we uh, can detect the operation of our nav light. Again, coming around here, we have the leading edge. Of course, it's bug covered, but that's all right. We're going to come this way, checking the leading edge of our wing, and as we get to the wing strut, we're checking its security, and we're checking the security of the fairing and of the tie-down. As we get here, we're checking the security of our fairing, making sure that our doors uh, have been installed properly and that there are no pins missing. Actually, I do see a pin missing in this door, and I'll uh, bring that up on the squawk sheet. Um, we do, we're going to check the security of our windshield, come around here, on the other side of the wing strut, sump our tank, again we're looking for blue 100 low lead aviation fuel, and no debris, there was debris in that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it on the ramp, if you live in Florida, do not do this guys, because it is illegal to do that in Florida, but I'm in Georgia, so this is okay, and again we have a good sample here, it's blue, and there was no debris. As we come down here, we have our brake line. We're checking that we're make sure, making sure that we're leaking no hydraulic fluid, and that the brake is in good condition, and that the tire is also in good condition. We're going to push around here. We're going to put my stuff right here, right as I go grab the ladder out of the back, uh, in order to inspect our fuel. We're open up our ladder here. We go to the top of the airplane. When you're up here, it's very important on a high-wing airplane to inspect the top side of the rivets, make sure everything's okay, uh, that we have no dents, no hail damage, or anything. We're going to come up here, we're going to open our right fuel cap, put it to the side, and the airplane just popped off so I can see the fuel. Ordinarily, what you would do is you would stick this down into the tank, okay, put this side down and put your, top, your finger on this like a straw, and then you would read the fuel quantity off of these little hash marks here. We don't need to do that because we can see the fuel in the tank indicating that it is full. We're going to come down here, we're going to check our antenna right here. And our linkages, making sure that our shimmy damper is good, uh, that our nose gear connection link is not broken, and that we have no excessive oil leakage. It, because this is the original uh, uh, 145 horsepower Continental engine, it does tend to leak oil, but that's all right. We're going to come here, and again, when we move the prop, we, don't, we never grab the prop. All we do is move it with our hands. That way, if it kicks back, we don't risk cutting our fingers off. We're checking for any birds that might have nested in here or any... Uh, anything that might be clogging your intake, again, here's our intake here, and our air cooling, again, this is bigger, a lot of uh, air needed to cool this engine, not like your car engine, which is liquid cool, this is air cool. We're checking the security of our exhaust muffler, being careful, because the airplane was just flown, so that is hot. And here we go, we're going to check our nose strut again here, and once it goes back, I should still have three fingers to space, which I do, so it is inflated properly. We're going to come around here, into the cockpit. Now, this is not out of order, I'm doing this because the fuel drain on this airplane is not in the cowling, it's in the airplane. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the lever, and I'm going to pretend like I'm flying single pilot, and that I have no 
water in the fuel. And I see nothing, and I'm making sure that it stopped draining as it did, and making sure that that valve's all the way in, is we do not want to waste fuel that costs seven and a half dollars a gallon. <clears throat> Excuse me, as we come around here, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, nothing leaking inside the cowling right here, making sure that our oil filler cap is on tight. I'm gonna grab a napkin real quick, guys, uh, to make sure that we can wipe our oil dipstick off. And again, we're gonna check the oil dipstick. Let's pull out. We are indicating a little less than five quarts. I'm uh, sorry, a little less than six quarts. That's indicating about six right there. We have enough oil. Uh, and again, that's you do it twice, just like I just did, because uh, it won't indicate uh, correctly the first time, most of the time. But we have enough oil for this flight. Now, if you're on a long cross-country flight, I would have added a quart. But we're not. So, we're going to uh, come again around here. Uh, this is a, the time, since we're at the tank, we're going to check the tank. So, we'll grab our ladder, nifty ladder again. Okay. And step up. Now the airplane should be topped off, same procedure as on the right side, unscrew it. Now the, the fuel cap on this side needs to be replaced, which is bad. Now I can see the fuel on this side too, so it is good to go. At this point, because I'm done checking fuel quantity, I will replace this into the cockpit in a secure position in the seat pocket uh, so that we do not leave it outside the airplane. As we come around here, we're checking to make sure that air inlets are clear, that uh, we are good, there's nothing in the pitot tube, very important, and as well as our static port, making sure it's clear. We're checking to make sure the security of the wing strut, just like we did on the other side. In this airplane, unlike your newer 170, Cessna 172s, this is a electrically controlled stall warning horn instead of suction. So what we have to do is we have to hit the master off the switch on, we'll do this quickly so we don't waste the battery, check to make sure we get the sound and we turn the master switch off again. As we come around here, we have our fuel uh, drain, fuel vent, uh, fuel drain, and making sure that there's no, there would be fuel coming out of it sometimes in the summer if it's very hot, but we're just making sure, we're checking for security mainly here. Checking security for the uh, landing light cover and the screws. We come here and we check, again, the security of your wingtip, shape your wingtip, making sure that the airplane is secure and that we have no issues there. We're gonna push our left aileron up, again, left, uh, excuse me, yes. Uh, a right turn here, and then a left turn. I see. I said that backwards, guys. This is a. This is going to be a uh, right turn here, and this is going to be a left turn because we have increased lift and decreased lift, and we're checking to make sure that we have that indicated on the yokes. Again, our counterweight, four bolts, four screws, and a counter pin. Our ca uh, our push rod, four bolts, four screws, and a cotter pin. And our Cotter print again, four bolts, four screws, checking to make sure that there's nothing inside the aileron that shouldn't be there. Again, there should be a little bit of flat play. Uh, we're checking the rollers, make sure that they're greased appropriately. We're checking sure that arm has a little bit of play and that there are no dents on the leading or the trailing edge of the flap on this side or anything like that. And again, we're checking our access panels here, 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 and here. Now, we're going to complete the last stages of our pre flight, which is that's secure. Uh, making sure that we uh, we sump this tank right here to eliminate any debris. Very important to do after you've had the airplane fuel because you know you don't know what was in the fuel truck. And again, I'm waiting for it to be uh, free of debris and the correct color. A hundred low lead is going to be blue for you guys. All right, so we're going to unshark our wheel, making sure that our tires in good condition, our brake, and there's nothing coming out of our, our hydraulic line. If you remember, we did have that one squawk. We're missing a door pin, so we will check that out right now, guys. But hope you enjoyed the video. This is how you pre-flight a 172 General Aviation Guru here. See you guys next time.